Hi there, I'm Haruka. If things go as planned, this should be pretty close to the end of the anime season. So I'm sure you've all cut down on all the anime you're not gonna watch and are finishing off the ones that you've stuck with. And there's one anime I hope you've stuck with. When I watched Princess Connect Redive season one, I thought long and hard about my rating. And at some point, I couldn't find a single reason not to give it a perfect 10. This sounds crazy and stupid, but you're just gonna have to follow me on this. Princess Connect is possibly a perfect anime, despite being the adaptation of a gacha game. Okay, so let's have a quick synopsis here. Uh, Yuki is a dude sent possibly from another world with no memory or even a personality. He's been sent Kokoro, who is a devoted straight man, as a guide to help him through this very confusing world and teach him things like how money is important and Money is not food! They meet Pecorine, a bubbly and hungry warrior girl, and Kiaru, the tsundere cat girl sent to destroy them. They start a guild together devoted to having meals together, definitely not an excuse just for Pecorine to eat everything. Uh, it's a slice of life, so they have some adventures. Kokoro gets lost in the woods with a llama, uh, Yuki gets trapped in a hospital with a yandere, they all go eat some weird mushrooms, uh, then they help some Girl Scouts with their merit badge. But then there's a hard left turn halfway through where suddenly things get a bit darker. There's these shadows that take the form of travelers and consume them into the void. The show changes from a simple fantasy slice of life into a horror-esque action show with hints of tragedy in the second time. That's because this happens twice, around episode 5 near the middle and episode 11 near the end. So let's talk about some of the things that I think were really important in making this show great. Uh, first, uh, let's talk about some character creation. So I've actually played the gacha game after watching the anime and I can say that there are a lot of characters. I have 40 girls on my team and there's still more that I haven't even gotten yet through gacha rolls. But unlike other gacha game adaptations, Prikone actually gives some time for each character to find a place. It also helps that the guilds are used as a great framing device to put characters on the screen in context without forcing you to try to learn everyone's name. And it also helps that everyone looks fairly unique. Then there's the core group versus the supporting group. Uh, that all comes from this concept of which characters in the game are core characters to the overall story and which ones are essentially fluff. I know it's a bit mean to call them fluff, but there's a reason why they're three star characters. By maintaining the anime's focus on this core group of four distinct characters, it helps to actually provide a way for the audience to latch onto the concept. Other anime adaptations might have too big of a core group, not giving you a real sense of who you're supposed to be empathizing with. And it's important to have that core well defined so that you can introduce other groups without confusing the audience. The guilds create a well-defined group of characters for the audience to associate together. If you see one character, you know what group they're with and who else is there. Hey, it's the Andre girl. I guess the purple-haired version of me is nearby. Yeah, you know what? That I don't see that anymore uh, since I wrote this. And in providing that separation, all these characters have their own time to pick up the interests of the audience. We don't linger too long on many of these supporting characters unless the joke itself can be understood without context. We don't need to know everything about these characters, and we aren't really asked to have any further knowledge of them in the anime other than what the anime gives you. You don't have any required summer reading before you watch the anime. And the other thing that I really want to mention is the unique expressions. Like, there's something so helpful in character development uh, when you can make each character do something very unique that you instantly associate with the character. I'm talking about Kokoro's shocked face, Kiaru's angry face, even something as simple as Pecorine's smile is something that is extremely unique to her and it gets you to remember the character. This is something that mostly comes from the animation itself, but is definitely influenced by the gacha game's cutscenes. It further separates characters from each other in the minds of the audience where even if you're bad at remembering names, you remember a specific character from what they specifically do. Finally, I want to talk about balance. I just want to mention before I go any further into the writing of the show that this was directed by Takaomi Kanasaki. He also did the series composition as well. You probably don't know his name too well, but he's the guy who directed Konosuba. Like, everything Konosuba except for a single OVA. I've definitely mentioned him a couple of times before as the reason why Sentoin Hakenshimasu wasn't as good as it could have been. With this series, Kanasaki proved to be an absolute miracle worker. He took a gacha game and essentially made a show that I personally put next to Konosuba. 
So as I get into this portion, I'm really trying to prove to you how good Kanesaki is. And the big thing about why what he makes is so good is balance. First of all, the comedy. The jokes in this show slap, and I don't just mean that they're good, I mean that he hits the note and moves on. For my American viewers, here's an example of what I mean. You know how they sing the US national anthem before every sporting event? Uh, and then there's always the person trying to bust out the vocal runs through every single note? That's stupid and not how it's supposed to be sung. The melody comes from a drinking song that's sung at a pub. You don't have freaking Mariah Carey at a pub. That's why Jim Cornelison is so good because he hits the note for its designated length and moves on to the next. So many shows fail to know when the joke is over and try to drag something out for just a bit too long. Maybe it's funnier on paper, maybe it's a bit of a quicker pace when you're reading it, but you need to understand the pace of how people talk and if that joke lasts too long, it's just not gonna sit right. So the reason why so much can be done in this show is because the jokes are efficient and well spaced. And the jokes worked as a counterbalance to the dramatic elements, but I'll get to that in a second. Let's talk about world building and the balance of world building. Once again, the introduction of all the characters was perfectly timed out in place. Characters in the same guild were introduced at the same time so you could associate them with each other, and they never overshadowed the main characters during their time on screen. The building of Landisol as a place is also done incredibly deliberately. Uh, there isn't any sort of info dub at the beginning about all the different places and things in the city. There's context clues, there's excursions to other places, but you don't get too many explicit things that you don't need. And finally, let's talk about tone. I still remember how excited I was first watching the end of episode 6 when that tone shift happened. The girl happily talking about her sister as said sister gets consumed by the void. And then a couple episodes later, the lads are making an obstacle course for some Girl Scouts. So that's why I really think that the handling of tone was done incredibly well because none of it felt forced. The entrance of the horror element was fitting as suddenly and terrifying, just how it would feel to the characters. And the re-entry of the shadows into the story was built outside of the comedic periods. You could tell that when an episode was talking about something important, the funny haha -ha would dip a bit, like background music as the key vocals start. It's a very particular balance to be able to do this sort of thing multiple times in a series, let alone multiple times in an episode. And balance of tone also means using things that happen in a certain tone and then using them again to reinforce another tone. Pecorine's tragic story at the end of the season with her in tears doesn't hit you as hard if you haven't seen her be absolutely careless and clueless the entire show. It reframes the perspective on who she is as a character. Yes, she's selfless, but the thing is, is that she is suffering herself, but she's choosing to think of others. The horror of those shadows isn't as terrifying if they're not creepily repeating words spoken during a comedic moment. So yeah, I think that Princess Connect is a perfect anime because it knows how to balance a lot of things at once while still presenting a story that is so much better than anything that anyone could expect. Gacha games have so much lore that it's incredibly hard to actually instill a feeling for the story in just one season, but Precone does that. I hope that season two is going well and hasn't just destroyed my entire argument like my uh, Sayonara Watashi no Kramer video had its argument uh, destroyed, uh, but Hey, we'll see what happens. This video is actually sponsored by Lucky Cat's Sticker Company. Go buy some damn stickers. Slap them on your laptop, slap them on your car, slap them on your own face. I don't care. Go to luckycats.com and enter the code JOCK for 15% off. That is J-O-C-K, JOCK, for 15% off at luckycats.com. Link in the description. Thank you. <laughs>